Okay. So here's the actual tea of what's going on, just so everybody's not confused. I kicked Megan off Willow because she got into one fight on the island and realized that it was too much for her. And because of that, I thought it would be fun to go on another villager hunt on Willow. But then over on Fallbrook, Teddy had a thought bubble over his head and he revealed that he wanted to move off of Fallbrook because the whole long distance thing that we have going on sucked because I'm always over on Willow and he just wanted a change of scenery. So he figured he might as well move with his number one bitch, that's me. He got so excited over the offer of moving on to Willow that he literally just packed up his shit and left. Like, I didn't know this happens <laughs> when you adopt a villager and you stay in their house while your friend leaves. Like, you literally just end up in their house alone. And yeah, as you can see, as evidenced by right here, he moved out. And now we're going on another villager hunt. Yay. She said now we have an announcement and I genuinely thought somebody moved in. I'm like, I time traveled one day. How could that happen? Why am I always getting a campsite villager when I have an empty plot? That works out so perfectly because here's the plan. We might as well go over it. I'm literally doing this villager hunt for me, not for y'all, not for my viewers. I'm doing this for me because it's been so long since I did a video where I just talked my shit and like did nothing. And like an Animal Crossing video nowadays is just me talking about whatever while the game is playing in the background. It's like a family guy video on TikTok. We're just gonna see who I can find. And you know, maybe if I get through the 50 tickets and I don't find anyone good, we'll just take whoever's in the campsite. 50 tickets in my pockets. And now the question remains, will I find a dreamy on island number one? No. <laughs> I mean, are we surprised? When have I, like, when have I ever found a dreamy on island number one? I don't think that's ever happened, and I don't think that's ever going to happen. I want to talk about Drag Race, okay? Like, that's the main reason we're doing this video, hello, because first of all, Canada vs. the World happened. Last time I talked about Canada vs. the World, like, they announced the promo, and now here we are again, and the show is, like, done. And last time, all I had to say was Raja O'Hara, and now that the show's over, all I have to say is Raja O'Hara. I'm so happy she won though. I don't even care that she didn't have the best stats. Like she, she deserves the crown. Her and Silky, honestly, I would have been all right with either of them winning. It was a good season overall though, which I didn't expect. Like I genuinely went into that thinking like, okay, it's just gonna be like a normal versus the world season. It's probably gonna be exactly like how the last one went. And then this one ended up being so much better. Personally, I found it better than UK versus the world. Oh my God, hi. I don't want you, bye. <laughs> I think UK vs. the world was definitely a lot more dramatic. Sure, like obviously people love that, but Canada vs. the world was just so feel good, lovey-dovey vibes. And honestly, that's what Drag Race needs, genuinely. Like, oh my God, too much toxicness in the Drag Race fandom. Like we just need a season that's just feel good entertainment. Pretty fair throughout. I think the only thing that I truly disagreed with was, um, Actually, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say Ice is quitting, but um, I, I, if she wants to quit, she can quit. Like, I'm not gonna stop her from doing that. It was so valid for her to do that. Shout out to Isis Katora. Genuinely one of my favorite winners, and I'm so happy that she was able to like showcase her talent once again. Cause Canada's Drag Race in general, so underrated. I think it's one of the most underrated franchises in the entire Drag Race fandom. Cause like season one got so much hype because it was the first season and like everybody was curious about how Brooklyn was gonna do as a judge. And then like that entire season was just a shit show because of the judging. And then I feel like because of that, everybody just checked out and then didn't bother to watch season two or three. But like, honestly, okay, I don't, I don't wanna deal with this. Like fucking hell, I am trying to have a moment where I just talk about the shit I like. And then this ugly thing has to show up. Fucking anchovy, the snitch. Like, what do you want? God damn, always interrupting me. Like, I don't have the fucking time for you, dog. Canada's Drag Race was so good. And honestly, like, it just deserves more love. Like season two and three were so much better than season one. I think entertainment wise, season one is still the best. Cause honestly, season one just had the best cast. I mean, you had Priyanka, Jimbo, Scarlett, Rita, Lemon, blah, blah, blah. Like the entire cast was just so entertaining. I think the reason why especially 
people when the first when the season first got announced like so many people were like oh why is there only like four countries being represented there's no thailand no holland blah 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 and genuinely i feel like the reason why that happened was because nobody cares about Canada's Drag Race. It's sad, but it's true. Like Canada's Drag Race, the audience is so much smaller than like UK and US. The queens who went on really already had like big audiences and like already had a huge following everywhere. Like these are queens that we all know, like Raja, Silky, Victoria, Isis, like these, and like even Anita and Stephanie, like these were fan faves from their season who already had a big following. Unlike this man right over here, this ugly ass thing who I do like. I do like you, Al. I do, but goddamn. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people didn't bother to go on a Canada's Drag Race because like no one's going to watch the season. And I feel like the viewership for the season, like even though it was a good season, like it didn't make a lot of noise, you know, like that was the problem. And I think that's why a lot of queens that were on the season were like, you know, kind of big names already. Whereas I feel like for people who didn't show up on the season, like they're kind of just waiting for like US versus the world or Australia versus the world or like a season that's hosted by RuPaul. And I think, I think that's why when they announced that they were working on a global all-stars, the reason why they're doing that is because they're most likely going to retire versus the world because versus the world in theory, it does work. But I think the second you just get into the legal side of it and how like, you know, say in Canada, RuPaul isn't able to host the show because you know, apparently like Canadian laws say you need a Canadian host, I think. That's what people are saying. I'm Canadian, I should know this, but I don't. But I'm pretty sure it's that's why Brooklyn hosts the season over here. So because of that already, viewership is gonna be lower because most people who watch are people watching for RuPaul. That's Carrie, I don't care. And then like on top of that, I think Global All-Stars is gonna be US based. The US seasons, All-Stars and Drag Race, like they have the biggest audience. They also have the biggest budget. They have like the biggest influence over the entire thing. So I feel like having it just be a US based international season, it's gonna do so much better, like genuinely. Like it's gonna do better than Canada versus the world and it's gonna do better than UK versus the world more importantly. UK versus the world already did really well because it's a RuPaul season. And like, look at Jimbo and Pangina, like those two really, their careers like took off because of that show. Imagine if Jurigi from Drag Race Spain went on to a US season of Global All Stars. Like so many people are gonna know who she is and so many people are gonna fall in love with her because that girl is so iconic. Season one of Global All Stars, if she's not there, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> oh shit, I'm not taking, oh, hi. <laughs> The lost girl, Miss Sydney. Ugh. I don't want her. Like, I don't know. I'm like trying to convince myself to take her, but I don't want her. This video isn't about the fucking villager hunt. This is about me talking my shit. I'm just doing this while I'm villager hunting. With global all-stars being US based, there's gonna be a huge audience. And I think because of that, like it's also gonna have a bigger budget. So hopefully more episodes, which means a bigger cast. And hopefully that means we're actually gonna get more queens from like other seasons. Say like Drag Race España, Drag Race Thailand, Drag Race Philippines. I think Global All-Stars is gonna do better than Versus the World. And I wouldn't be mad if they just retired Versus the World all overall. Like it was a cute moment. Like I'm happy for Blue and Raja, they won, they deserved it. And now they have, you know, the winner status. But I feel like just having one consistent series take place in in one country on one network. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm not taking you because I have you on Willow would just make more sense. You know, it's like one fluid thing. It's one show with multiple seasons rather than it being just multiple different shows. It like, again, it's cute in concept versus the world, but like in execution, it was kind of messy. And honestly, like I would be more satisfied with Global All-Stars and continuing with the Drag Race talk because it's been so long since I've done this. Season 15, speaking of United States. Oh my God, like that cast reveal was so long ago, but <laughs> I haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. And now I'm going to because I, well, I'm excited for the season. Duh, it's Drag Race. When am I ever not excited for a season? I think the cast right away, like the first thing you got to say is why are there 16 queens? <laughs> but like, honestly, thinking about it, though, I'm not against it. Because honest, like with 
the way Drag Race is going now, it's so obvious that this season is going to have a lot of episodes. Like season 13 and 14, they both had like, what, 16 episodes? 16 episodes with only 14 queens. There's obviously going to be more than one instance where nobody goes home. Oh God, I do. Oh God, he needs to go home. What are you doing out here in the middle of the fucking woods? Like he camouflages so well in the winter time. He's doing something sus. Like I, mm -mm. we're just going to leave him there. Sure, you can stay there. Stay 10 feet away from me, please. 16 queens. If it's 16 episodes, then hopefully that means there aren't going to be as many episodes where nobody goes home. Like, I don't mind when a season has like one double Shantae, but season 14, the fact that season 14, the queen who placed ninth and the queen who placed eighth were three weeks apart when the season was airing. Like, what the hell was up with that? I don't get it. And literally the week before you know, the queen who placed ninth was eliminated. There was another non-elimination round. It was a stupid top two for your lip sync thing. Like what the fuck? I get that they were just trying to like stretch out the season as long as they could because of the whole like episode issue. Cause you know, the show orders the number of episodes before they start filming. So they went into the season knowing they had to film 16, 14 of them being the actual competition and then the reunion plus the finale. So 14, episodes with 14 queens in theory that would mean one person would have to go home every episode but they can't do that so they had to do the fake elimination the double chante the top two for your life um f fuck you <laughs> and then they had the fucking golden bar that entire thing which was so useless there was no point of that twist i don't think it's coming back in season six, 15 but Please never again. If you are gonna do that, I would rather they did that on All Stars. I think that twist would make more sense on an All Star season. It's like an immunity idol. Oh my God, literally an immunity idol. The fact that they haven't done immunity idols yet on All Stars, like that season is fully based off Survivor. The whole idea that like the Queens are able to choose who goes home every week. Where is the immunity idol? That should be a thing. Imagine All Star 6 when that episode happened where there was a tie between Jan and Pandora and then they were like, oh, Trinity, reveal your lipstick. And she's like, bam, bitch, I chose Jan to go home. And then Jan was like, bam, I have a chocolate bar. You can't send me home. Pangina, you, or Pandora, you go pack in. Drag Race, if you're listening, please bring that twist. That would be a gag. That would actually be a gag. Oh my God. Like they use the immunity idol on themselves and then it could either just be a you know non-elimination round that's most likely what they're gonna do that's keaton okay but i think it would be even more fun if like the next queen with the most amount of votes got sent home instead that would be that would be shady that would be so shady if they did that but they're not gonna do that they're probably just gonna make it like a double shantae around instead but back to 15 drag race 15 <laughs> i should be talking about that this cast there's so many queens on this season, but somehow I'm able to remember all 16 of them. And I will say just based on promos alone, first of all, Sasha Colby. I know, like I know everybody's probably tired of hearing about her, but like it's Sasha Colby. Of course, she's at least making top three. She's making top three for sure. They're not gonna send her home. They're not gonna send her home. That's like if they send Cheddar home. Cause basically like, if you don't really know, like she's well known in the drag industry, not in the drag race industry. Cause obviously I feel like a lot of people who don't know her are people who are just drag race fans and not drag fans. Like I'm not really that well versed on US drag and like the local drag scene over there and stuff. But even I know who Sasha Colby is, at least by name. I don't know like her that well, but I've heard of the name before. Like she is one of those drag queens that like, I feel like every drag queen just knows who they are. I don't, I'm tr this, Ugly ass, like fucking hell. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste my breath. We're just going to power through. We're going to pretend like I never saw him. Sure, I want to push him off this cliff and just make sure he breaks his neck, but I'm better than that. I am so much better than that. Like, mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Sasha Colby is winning. <laughs> 
Like, if she's winning, she's gonna win. The problem with that is that as excited as I am to see Sasha Colby on the season, I, like, when she is the front runner, like, it's like, okay, <laughs> we've been new. I'm usually good at predicting the winners for Drag Race. I've been consistent with that this entire time. But, like, this is, like, if on Drag Race UK Season 4, for, like, you know, context, if Danny or Cheddar had competed by themselves, you would have known that either of them would have won by themselves. Of course, like they put them both on the same season to like add that dramatic rift. But Sasha Colby is literally like legendary. And like you can tell by the way all of these drag queens from US, like specifically the Drag Race girls, they're all gagging and excited to see her on the season. Like that's how big of a name she is in US drag. Hi Vlad, bye Vlad. I'm so excited to see her on the season, genuinely. Like, she's my pick for the crown. She, just Sasha Colby. <laughs> Literally, like, if you are curious though, like, just Google her. Like, Google her performances, Google everything she's done. Like, it's there if you're curious, you can just Google it. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if like, she just does good every week. She might be like Jinx Monsoon level, just like always in the top, minus that last bottom. I don't think that's happening. Like she might be like Envy Peru or Sharon level of like stats, you know? I wouldn't be surprised. It would be insane though if that actually happens because considering how big this season is, it's probably going to be a long ass season two. And if she manages to make the entire season without ever having a lip sync once, like that would be wild. That would be wild. But anyways, to get off the Sasha Colby high horse, let's talk about the other girls. Um, the other queens that really like stood out to me, I feel like this list is going to be so basic because like I feel like everybody has the same queens that are standing out to them. Anitra is the first one. I have seen Anitra perform. I googled a bunch of girls, you know, after they were announced and some of them I've known who they were before the season, which by the way, this is the first season where I knew a lot of the queens before drag race like before they were announced on the season like i knew sasha i obviously knew the twins i knew who Jax was and like lux noir as well and like it's so wild to see <laughs> queens that i actually know from us because i don't know a lot of us queens like obviously i know canadian queens because no, i'm from here but the us drag scene i'm not really that familiar with anitra is one of the queens i saw her perform like she is oh my god like she is a performer and she just looks fun like i can see her going far and i just like i feel like i'm gonna be rooting for her alongside sasha like she's probably my number two pick for the crown um definitely her and sasha are top two if that's possible like i would love that anitra is definitely my favorite out of all of the cast aside from sasha <laughs> but the other queen that like really stood out to me is lucy lucy laduca first of all oh my god first of all first of all First of all, hi. Oh my God, you, Miss Audie, the girl. I am looking for a girl today. I guess I should make that clear, but I have Audie's amiibo, so that's not as fun. Like I should, I should make that clear. Oh my God, for everybody who's actually interested in this villager hunt, like there are only three girls on Fallbrook once again, which I think is so disgusting. So yes, I'm looking for a girl today. Back to Drag Race. <laughs> This video is literally just me talking my shit. Like, this is just me talking about real life stuff. Like, this is just going to be playing in the background for, like, stimulation, like I said. Don't even pay attention to this. Like, pay attention to me. Honestly, hang on. Let me make my face, like, there so you can actually look at me as I talk. Like, who cares about what's going on on screen? Look at me. Look at me. Is that allowed? Like, can I do that? We're, the, the focus of this video is me, okay? Not the game. Um, the other queen that I'm really interested in, Lucy, I said that already. Lucy LaDuca, I, first of all, the fact that she's a construction worker, a construction worker, like that is sick. That is so sick, a construction worker. Like she literally has a normal job. I just like her, her energy. She has a really good energy to her. Like she seems professional, unlike that bitch over there. She seems like she's really funny. Like her Meet the Queens interview, like I was, I was tuned in for that. I was really interested by what she had to say and everything. I, my prediction, I'm not gonna say it yet. I'll save the predictions of her later, but I have a big prediction for her. Lucy LaDuca definitely though, like is the other queen. Like. Lucy, Anitra, and Sasha. That's my top three as of now. I don't know. I just really, really like Lucy. And I feel like, like she's going to leave this season with like 
if she, especially if she goes far, which I feel like she will, um, like she's probably going to be the one to like be the breakout star of the season, you know? I don't know. Like, that's just what I'm feeling from her. Because like, I really do like her. I really do. Like, she seems like she's going to be good TV. Not only just good TV, but like, I think she's going to do well in the challenges. I think like she, she looks like she's good at acting. Like, she's going to do well in, like, the acting challenges. Lux Noir, I said I'd known who she was before. I That's another queen I'm really excited for. I love Lux Noir London, okay? Like, she is so cool to me. And she's so funny, which I never realized how funny the girl actually was. Because I've seen her on Instagram. That's where I know her from. So, like, I've seen photos of her. I've seen, like, videos of her performing. But I never heard her talk until this video. And I was like, oh, my God, this girl is ditzy as hell. <laughs> Like, she was like, oh, my aunt, or no, my aunt, I don't know which way to say it, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's something I would say. And that just made me fall in love with her even more. And like, she is so pretty. She's so pretty. She's so cool. Um, Yeah, I do really like her. Like, she just, I feel like she might be my favorite like if she goes far in the season and like her personality is able to shine like she might be my favorite like during the season aside from the three that i mentioned the other queen that i'm really excited for is Jax because i i'm calling it right now like i feel like she's gonna be the lip sync assassin of the season because she is a lip syncer i've seen her shit on tiktok Oh my god, that girl knows how to perform too. If we ever get an Anitra versus Jax performance, we win. We win. If that ever happens, give them a high energy song. Let them do the amount of gymnastic tricks that they need to. It's gonna be like Queen Kong versus Beverly Kills. Like that kind of level of chaos, for sure. And I'm popular opinion, because that lip sync was definitely a lip sync, but I enjoyed it. I think the only reason why people hated it was because of the song choice. Like, why were they doing that to the beginning by Ru? Paul. They were doing tricks and flips and gravity defying moves to the beginning by RuPaul. Oh my god, another queen who I have an amiibo of. Hi Freya, bye Freya. If they had like a high energy, dancey, punky, poppy song and they did all that shit, like it would have been a gag. And I'm ready for an Anitra vs. Jax lip sync. I want to see it. I want to see it. Please, please let it happen. Please let it happen. That's all I want. Yeah, Jax is the other queen that I'm really excited for. But then like, even with the rest of the cast, like Malaysia looks like she's funny. Malaysia looks like she knows how to tell a good joke. Like honestly, of all the queens who I want to like hang out with in real life, it's Malaysia. I feel like Malaysia would make me laugh. Selena as well. Selena is titties. That girl looks like she's funny. I want to hang out with those two. Imagine those two like in a fucking blunt rotation. That would be the best, the best one, and <laughs> the best one you can possibly do. Yeah, like the cast overall, I'm really excited for. I really do like a lot of them, but the twins, the twins, like first there's Sasha Colby. I feel like if you know who the twins are and you were excited to see them, that's how drag queens felt when they saw Sasha Colby. But the fact that Sugar and Spice are like actually competing on Drag Race is so wild to me. Oh my god, hi Genji. Bye Genji. <laughs> the fact that the twins are actually competing on Drag Race is so wild to me because like they already have like really good careers for drag queens. Like the fact that they both have millions, millions of followers on TikTok, but neither of them have ever been on Drag Race is so wild to me. As drag queens, as drag queens, they have like mainstream careers already. They don't necessarily need Drag Race when you really think about it. I'm happy to see them on the show though, because the twins are dope. We're definitely gonna get a lip sync between them though. <laughs> Listen, this show is inspired by America's Next Top Model. Like they literally, like season one's tagline was like America's Next Top Model for drag queens. And on America's Next Top Model, there have been three separate seasons where they had like siblings or twins compete. And there's a pattern. There is a pattern for how they, they how they like promote them and feature them. They always have them have a rivalry for sure. Like there's always the better twin, which Sugar and Spice, like Sugar and Spice lore, they already have that set for them. Sugar is the better twin among the two of them. She's supposed to be like the popular girl. Whereas like Spice is like the alt, the alt queen, just like Phil over here. Hi, Phil. The outcast sister. And then Sugar is like the popular cheerleader girl. That's the kind of vibe at least I get from them. So a hundred percent, they're going to be playing with that right away. And I think with American Sex Not Model, they've had sisters compete 
And the first time they competed, they both went far. And like they made it just short of the finale. They were literally like fifth and fourth place. The second time they had siblings compete was season 15, where once again, they did like the better sibling story, like Chris and Tara. Chris was the better sister and Tara was like the shy one. And then Tara went home early and then Chris went far. And then season 23, they did it again. Oh, this one was funny. They had twins compete again. It was Tash and Cody. And I'm pretty sure like Tash was the better twin in that storyline, but then she ended up going home 12 and Cody went on and on and like ended up being like one of the front runners of the competition. I will forever say that Cody was robbed. She should have been top three, by the way. And then the gag was they brought Tash back halfway through the competition and she ended up placing sixth and then Cody placed fifth. It was so funny. Like they did both of the previous storylines in one season with one move, just like that. Oh my God, Miranda. Wow, I forgot about her. And I'm going to keep forgetting about her because I don't want her. So I, I like prediction for sure. The storyline's either going to be one of them goes home early. One of them goes far or they're both going far, but not making the finale. And I, I feel like it's going to be the first one. One of them's going home early. One of them's going like maybe top five, at least top five. And like, I wouldn't be surprised if like episode four or five, like maybe even six, you know, like it's a big challenge. And like, they just like have them both in the bottom, lip syncing to a ballad, making them cry, making them all emotional. Like it's definitely gonna be an emotional elimination if it does happen. We all see it coming. Like it's drag race. They're going to do it. They're gonna make them both lip sync against each other. If Sugar and Spice have to lip sync, like who do we think is winning? I'm personally rooting for Spice because I like Spice more because she's more my style. Like I think Spice is gonna go far. Sugar's going home early. My top five prediction, I want to do a top three prediction, but seeing as how season 14 went, it's most likely going to be another top five, which please don't let that happen. But if it does happen, who's in the top five for me? Sasha, for sure. I want Anitra in the top five and I can see her in the top five. So I'm going to put Anitra up there as well. Lucy as well. Like they were my original three. So like they're going to be in my personal top five. I'm going to say Spice. I feel like they're going to, they're like, come on. She is the biggest name alongside Sugar and Sasha. So like capitalism marketing strategy, like obviously try to keep them in for as long as you can for viewership reasons. I'm sure Sh Spice is talented and I can see her going far anyways. But like, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she ended up making top five. Like sh I, I get fifth place vibes from her. And based on Meet the Queens alone, I'm thinking Mistress, Mistress Isabel, because I get a good vibe from her too. I do really like her and I could see her doing really well. I think either her or Lucy are gonna win Snatch Game like right away. That's my prediction. Either her or Lucy or maybe Lux. Cause like I said, Lux is really funny. And if she chooses a good character and does it really well, like I could see her winning Snatch Game too. And then for the ball, um, I'm thinking Lucy. Like I think Lucy might win the ball or Sasha cause Sasha's Sasha Colby. But like I could see Lucy winning like at least one of the major challenges. You know, the Rusical, the ball and the Snatch game. Lucy's winning at least one of them. Sasha's gonna win one of them maybe. And maybe Mistress. Like those are the three major winners. Okay, Gala. Oh wait, oh my God, I forgot about you. She used to live on Blue. Wow, that was a fun thing. Miss Gala, literally forgot about her. <laughs> Drag Race 15 is coming soon. Literally, like, oh my God, it's next week. Like, ne oh my God, I just took that in. January 6th is next week. That's so weird. It feels like a month away. Like, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a week from this video when I post it. So like, comment down below who you think is gonna win and why is it Sasha Colby? <laughs> but I am, I'm just so excited for the season, especially like with it being on MTV, you know the budget's gonna be big. I think that's the main reason why they switched over to MTV. Cause a lot of people were like, what's the point? Like VH1 was doing well already, but MTV has the bigger budget. Like MTV is the bigger network. It's more popular. At this point, they need a big budget. They like, they need more money because they got to license good music in order to have good lip syncs on the show, first of all. So they need money for that. And I think the queens themselves deserve more money. Like, is it too 
like wrong to ask that like give them more money like give them like they're getting a two hundred thousand dollar prize this year that's already well enough who are you gwen or friga this is gwen right yeah okay cool i hope they get more money for winning challenges each week like just give them more opportunities to get money because these queens spend so much money just to be on the season on their outfits alone they just deserve it like they're they're drag queens they work hard they deserve not only the exposure but money in return for being on the show don't you think that's fair i think it's pretty fair hopefully it's a good season though like please please let this be like the renaissance of modern drag race because goddamn like these last two seasons as much as i do love them they were just doing too much. You know, based on the promo for Drag Race 15, it's kind of like teasing the idea that it might be going back to their roots, going back to like what was good, because it's the season one promo revamped. So I wouldn't be surprised if there were a lot of hints and teases to like, who the fuck is that? Oh my God. Oh my God. I saw the orange and the green and I thought it was Biscuit. Imagine if it was. If, if it was, I would have taken him. I would have made an exception for him. I would have. Even though I have him on the other island and I have his amiibo, he's an exception. I feel like this might be, like if it goes really well, specifically for production, like obviously it's going to perform well. Like it's RuPaul's Drag Race. It's going to do great. But if production isn't stupid like they usually are, and it's a good season overall. Like I could see this being the renaissance of Drag Race. Who's on this island? Let's see. Is there a good villager here? It's Ava. Ava Max. Oh my God. Speaking of Ava Max. Great, great segue. 2023 is soon approaching and like there is so much music and there's so many artists that are like already teasing that they're going to drop next year. And right away like january is next year and miley cyrus she is coming because she said she's teasing something early next year she's supposed to be hosting the jingle bell ball this year right on december 31st i wouldn't be surprised if january 1st she's releasing a new single like as the new year rings like she's gonna perform a new single right away i am so excited i fucking love miley cyrus <laughs> plastic hearts plastic hearts came out in 2020 it's a good good album and honestly like I'm really excited for her sound and the way she's going now. I feel like this next album might be her best album that she's ever released. And I'm very, very, very excited for it. And then also there's Ava Max. <laughs> Ava Max. It's so weird because I used to just not care for her. But like I recently heard all the singles that she's dropped. They're so good. They're just like great, fun, pop sound and songs. I'm actually really excited for her album. It comes out next month as well. I'm not an Ava Max stan, but I feel like if this album is good, I'm going to become one for sure. For sure. And then there's also Lana Del Rey. Like we're getting another Lana Del Rey album. <laughs> it feels like it feels like Blue Bannisters and Chemtrails just came out, but like those came out last year, which unpopular opinion. The Lana stands are going to come for me for this one, but like I, I liked Chemtrails. Obviously Blue Bannisters was better. Like, let's, let's not get it twisted. Blue Bannisters was the best, you know, it's one of her best albums, like, overall. I think NFR is still her best album, duh. Like, Norman fucking Rockwell, damn, she fucking did that. But Chemtrails, like, people were saying it was her worst album. And I think it's just because for me personally, I just enjoy that, like, soft rock country vibes a lot. Like, surprisingly, like, I like country music. Sorry, I have to say it. Does that shock people that I like country music and, like, rock-sounding songs? That white people shit? Like, sorry, I fuck with it. Who is this? Who are- <gasps> Oh my god. Oh my god, do I take- No, I don't want- Oh my god. Yo, the fucking jacket. The fuck- You know she's not wearing- <laughs> She's not wearing anything underneath. <laughs> She looks like the type of girl to just wear a trench coat and nothing else. Like the fishnets, the lipstick. Like if she was human, she would do that. Oh my God. It's, do I, like, I don't, how many tickets do I have left? Like, ugh, if I see her again, then maybe I'll consider it. Cause I want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> That's my toxic trait. I just want to keep going because villager hunting, as much as I hate it, it is fun to do. <laughs> it's fun. Sorry. I just, uh, <laughs> crap. I wish, oh, I'm not taking her. There's like rumors that Beyonce is releasing act two of Renaissance, which if that actually happens, and apparently it's a country album, apparently it's going to have country in like country Fuck you. Apparently it's gonna have a country influence. If Beyonce does country music, 
That's a win for me. I just openly admitted that I like country music. I love how like we love to shit on country music, but like if you listen to a good country album, like you'll get it. Like, first of all, Casey Busgraves, Golden Hour. That is a good album. That is a good album. And it's a country album. It's a country album, but it's good. It won album of the year, I'm pretty sure in 2018 or 2019. And it deserved it. Like, I don't care. It's a great album. Also, like this year, um, Orville Peck released Bronco. That's another good album. It's country and it's good. I fuck with it. I really do. Yeah, so if Beyonce does country music, it's over. It's over for everyone because she's gonna demolish. He blends in with the trees so perfect. Oh, he's hiding behind a tree. Yeah, stay behind that tree, you ugly, ugly thing. God damn. I can't believe Legends Arceus came out in January. Like, that is so weird to me. That game came out this year. I will say it, it's my favorite Pokemon game. It's better than Gen 5. It's better than Pokemon Emerald. Even though I don't, I don't want a new Pokemon game if it does happen, I feel like it might be the next Legends game. Like, it, like I, that's a stretch. But if we are getting a new Pokemon game, if not next year, then the following year, like, I feel like we're going to get another Legends game, which I really hope we do. Because like I said, I think Legends is like the right step. Like, it, it's, it's, it's good. It's great. It's amazing. I mean, like, I've done videos of it on the channel. Um... Which, by the way, like, I kind of want to replay the game. And, like, honestly, if I do replay the game, would y'all watch it? <laughs> would y'all watch a video if I did Legends Arceus again? Because, like, I did the I did videos at the beginning of the year and then they completely flopped. Like, flopped to the point where, like, it was hurting the channel. So that's why I didn't make them. But, like, hello, now my Pokemon videos are doing well again. So, like, if you're one of those people who like Pokemon, um... Hi. If I did another Legends Arceus video, like, would y'all watch it? Be honest. Please be honest. Because I want to replay the game so bad. Like, it's not even just because, like, the gameplay mechanics and everything. It's just the overall vibe of that game. And the overall concept of that game is just my style. That's the type of game I love. And then the soundtrack. The soundtrack is amazing. Like, the Jubilife, te the Jubilife theme, that's literally one of the best songs to come out this year. It's not even funny. And then speaking of, like, Scarlet and Violet, oh my god, the Scarlet and Violet soundtrack, Area Zero, Penny's battle theme. Whoever, whoever was in charge of music, aside from Toby Fox. Because Toby Fox, I know, like, people are saying Toby Fox did it, Toby Fox did it. He didn't make every single song, just so everybody knows. He's on the team, but he didn't produce every song. Just so we're clear, if we are getting a new Pokemon game next year, it's definitely it's not going to be mainline. Please don't let it be a mainline game. Like, please let it be a spinoff. Give your team a break. Ew. Ew. What the fuck are you doing here? God damn. What a beautiful sight. Above this majestic waterfall lies an ugly beast. I really hope, though, that Pokemon Legends isn't just a one time thing. Like, I hope they continue it because... It's just too good. But what I do think for sure is happening this year or next year on 2023, uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. I am ready for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC if it does happen, because I hope, first of all, that the DLC isn't like what they did with Sword and Shield. Oh my God, you again? Miss Timbra, I'm not taking you. How many tickets do I have left? 17 already damn i'm flying through these tickets i hope that this dlc actually like expands on the story rather than doing like isle of armor and crown tundra which were basically like spin-offs you know like the story ended in sword and shield and then they just kind of did like two random new things right because with scarlet and violet it looks like they like ended it where it ended on purpose because there's so many like unanswered questions like where's the third legendary where did the paradox pokemon actually come from and are there more of them and like you know i feel like there's still so much to learn about area zero overall that i hope with the dlc they kind of just expand on that rather than introduce a new mechanic overall like so many people are theorizing that we're gonna go back to kalos and as much as i would like that i would rather like more about area zero like am i allowed to say that <laughs> like do people agree like if i had to choose between more area sto area zero lore or kalos i would rather the area zero lore but Considering that, you know, Sword and Shield, they had two DLC titles like Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that again, you know, like one DLC explores more about Area Zero and then the other one, which releases later on, is the Kalos one. 
Like that could be cool too. 100% that we have to get DLC for this game because we don't even have a third legendary. Like at least in X and Y, which also didn't get like DLC or like another game. They still had the third legendary in there, Zygarde. But this game doesn't even have a third legendary. Like we don't know anything about the third legendary and like it's a Pokemon game. There has to be a third legendary. There has to be, right? <laughs> like it would make sense. Yeah, I know, I know there's hints of it in the game already. So like the third legendary is real. If you don't know, it's in the Violet book. Um, you find the Violet book in the library in post game. It kind of teases the third legendary. I feel like if there is DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and it specifically focuses on Area Zero and expanding that whole storyline. Like I already have so many theories for how it's gonna go. Like for starters, we're gonna learn more about the third legendary, um, like 100%, or like we're gonna be able to catch it, duh, and like actually see it in person. Cause the whole theory is that the third legendary is right here in front of me, this legendary villager. The third legendary is what creates the Paradox Pokemon. Like it's basically the time machine, apparently. Or like it powers the time machine more importantly. And it also like powers terrestrialization as well. We're definitely gonna get more Paradox Pokemon. At least one more. Cause again, it teases it in the Violet and the Scarlet book. If you like scroll through, like you see in Pokemon Violet, it's the, you know, the Swords of Justice trio. And then in Pokemon Scarlet, it's the Johto trio. The Johto trio, which by the way, that's why I feel like we're gonna get something Johto based because why would they choose those three Pokemon? Why would they choose the legendary dogs of all the things? And then the Swords of Justice as well, Gen 5 remakes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to start the discussion of Gen 5 remakes because I'm afraid. I am afraid for Gen 5 and like what they're going to do for the remakes. Because look at Generation 4. Brilliant Diamond. Like, mm -mm. We, we, we don't pretend. We believe that those games never happened. They never, never happened. It worries me for Gen 5 because I just hope and pray that they don't go that exact same route for Gen 5. Please, please don't do a true remake. Please expand on the game and like make it better. Oh my God, with Gen 5 remakes though, like how are they gonna go about it? Because there's a sequel to that game. So are they gonna remake the sequel as well? Or are they just gonna do the original games? I feel like with the new generations in general, like there's so much more to those games that when it comes time to remake them, what are they gonna do? Like say like Auras, it technically blends the two games together, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, and then it adds Emerald into both of those games, the Delta episode, and so on and so forth. And then Gen 4 was Gen 4, um, the remakes. Although like some people theorize that Legends Arceus was actually supposed to be the Sinnoh remakes, which honestly, like I can kind of agree with that too. I think that's why they did what they did. They released BDSP, to like make the Sinnoh stands shut up. And then they released Legends Arceus as like a platinum remake, I say in air quotes, because it's more so like expanding on that story. You know, you're a 15 year old, so it's, you could arguably be the champion from Sinnoh region. And then five years later, you get sent back in time. Yes, this is that taco video. I'm literally quoting that video. Go watch that video. It just expands on the Legends Arceus lore. And that's why I have this theory. Like for the Gen 5 remakes, we might get Pokemon Legends Curum instead. There's gonna be Gen 5 remakes. And then instead of doing Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, they're gonna do a Legends Curum game. Like that could be fun. I don't know. If they do that route instead for the newer games, like instead of doing remakes, they do Legends games instead. Like imagine Pokemon Legends Zygarde. Oh my God, like Pokemon Legends Zygarde, you actually go back 3000 years ago to the war that took place in Kalos and you finally learn what the fuck actually happened. And like you see AZ in his prime time. I'd fuck with it, I would. And then like, what if Pokemon Legends for Scarlet and Violet takes place in the future. <gasps> like you actually time travel to the future and you meet again with Professor Turo or you meet, you go back to the past and meet Professor Sada. Like that would be interesting if they go in the Legends route instead for remakes from here on forth. Because like, I mean, I guess you could, like remakes are great. Do we really need them in this day and age? We have emulators now. I would rather a brand new game over a remake. Like what if Legends Arceus is, supposed to be like at least pokemon teasing the idea of how they're gonna do remakes from here on now it would be cool i think it would be interesting because i feel like a lot of the games now 
kind of focus on like telling those tales of either the past or the future you know like especially with pokemon scarlet and violet like there's really a focus on like the history of the region and stuff like that so imagine if like that's what they're going to do instead of remakes now. They make Legends games for them instead. And you actually are able to go back to the past and learn about the history while being in it. Like you're basically a part of history. I don't think they're going to do that for Gen 5, but I feel like Pokemon Legends Zygarde might end up being a game that actually comes to life. Who are you? Ah. Oh, it's Elmer. I had him on Windle. He's cool. I like him. I was talking so much throughout this video about nothing. I didn't even realize like how many tickets I went through. I'm on the final stack and it's that point of the villager aren't where I'm just like exhausted now. I'm just like, all right, let's just let this shit end. I guess we'll just see who's here. I don't know. I'm down to just take the campsite villager though. Like I'm, I'm in for the surprise, but ugh, okay. We'll just go through these 10 tickets though. Cause I want to see who they are. Ew, ew, ew. Ew, no, no, no fuck boys. Honestly, New Year's resolution for all of us, no fuck boys in 2023. Starting with Goose over there and Drake, the other fuck boy. We get two fuck boys on one island. Who's this? <gasps> My punk king, Sid. Ugh, I love you. Oh my God, it's Lolly. Oh. Lolly's cool, but like we're so close to the end of the stack. I just want to see at this point, like I have to see it through unless I get like an icon, you know, like a baddie, someone who has to be on the island. Like I'm down to just finish off this stack of tickets. I'm not going to be using these tickets for anything else. So at least it's great that I cleared out my storage in time for 2023. Ooh, New Year's spring cleaning. Ooh, are you a good villager? Nope, nope. No, that's definitely not a good villager. Hell no. I said no fuck boys in 2023. Of course, in the last villager hunt that I do this year, she had to show up. She had to show up at least once. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia, for your fucking service. I literally forgot that you existed. Like, I forgot. I forgot about you. And thank you for coming in now to remind me of who you are and reminding me how much of a waste of time you are every single time I see you. This is the waste of a minute dealing with her bullshit again. No fuck boys in 2023 and no Claudia. Unless your name is Claudia and you're watching this, you're valid. But that villager named Claudia? No. Oh my god, Bertha. <laughs> Hi, girly. I'm not taking you, but it was nice to see you again. Ooh. Wait, <laughs> I just kicked her off Willow. Megan is so boring. She would provide nothing on Fallbrook, nothing. Like I feel like everybody on Fallbrook now is just so chill and so like to themselves. If I had to choose, like I would choose someone who would bring the drama and Megan did not do that. She did nothing of the sorts. She was a victim. Oh my God, B, B. I literally have nothing else to say about that. Like. It's B. <laughs> Great. This is the second to last ticket. And the villager on this island is... <laughs> I mean, I have one ticket left. I, 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 ugh, this is a bit, uh, I mean, ugh, listen, what a great way to end the year. This is, this is an opportunity, like, to start off 2023 with my least favorite villager on my... <laughs> oh my god! No! No! Oh my god, I did it. I did it. Oh my god, I kicked Teddy out for Rodney. <laughs> Oh, who's mad right now? Which one of y'all are mad in the con? I know y'all are mad for this. And I don't, you, like, please don't comment that. Don't comment, oh my God, I can't believe you found Rodney. Comment a completely different villager, please. Please just comment a completely different villager. Be like, oh my God, I can't believe you found Celia. Oh my God, I can't believe you found Biscuit again. Like do that, trick everybody. Trick everybody so that they actually get surprised when they get to the end. Do not let them know who I found. Do not let them know that Rodney. 
Rodney. Rodney is moving on to Fallbrook. Rodney. The ugliest fucking hamster. And he's, of course he's neighbors with Lopez too. I'm sick and twisted. That is sick and twisted. But it, it what a great way to end the year though, am I right? Who was in the campsite? Who the fuck was in? What if there was a good villager in the campsite? Oh my God. Imagine there was a, like, I, like I have all my dreamies. So honestly, like I don't actually give a fuck whoever's in here. Like I probably would be okay with letting them go. But like, what if it's a good villager? Who's in the campsite? Three, two, one. Okay. Thank you. Hey, it's a girl. Between Annabelle and Rodney, though, I uh, surprisingly, I would probably choose Rodney. <laughs> now for today's announcements. We have a new friend on our island. Let's give a big Fallbrook welcome to Rodney. <laughs> How symbolic. My favorite villager and my least favorite villager right next to each other on the map. I am so sorry to the girls. The girls, the three girls, the three amigos, the plastics of the island, it's still the three of them. I went into this hoping to kick a guy out so I could bring a girl in. And we're just back with another fucking dude. Oh my God. Whitney, Agnes, and Margie. Like those poor girls, man. It's literally just the three of them against the boys. Oh my God. He, he, he is here. This is actually happening. Y'all, like blink, blink, y'all. This is actually happening. So here you are on my island. I really should have seen this coming. Rodney moving onto my island. I mean, I have a tattoo of him, so it's only fair that I have the villager on my island now, too. 